Last night, residents here in the Norton Park neighborhood, 79th Avenue West, woke to sounds of shouting, broken glass, and a single gunshot. Minnesota's governors consistently promised and then taken back millions in local government aid. Michelle, just a few hours ago, behind me, this huge vertical steel column lowered into its new home in the bare concrete here at the Duluth International Airport. Well, Michelle, tonight's debate was all about jobs. Now, it's fitting it happened in Superior because all three candidates firmly focused on the middle class. Developers think this beautiful stand of trees would look great with a new electric billboard in the middle. With the I-35 mega project in its final stages, ramps are supposed to open this weekend. Witnesses say it was an organized shooting like none they've ever seen. Even though moose are big animals, they're not very easy to count. That's why researchers use helicopters and small airplanes like this. Beautiful rivers and rocky streams across the Northland are once again filling up with fall fish. The city of Superior braces for a huge summer road construction season. The state nursery here in Hayward isn't making enough money. And although the family lost everything they owned, the community gave them something that they never expected. Superior police say this is the worst string of murders they've seen in over 30 years, partly because it involves the death of an unborn baby. Evidence obtained at the crime scene indicates that the perpetrator of this violent action was likely Matthew Madges. A handgun was located at the scene that is suspected to have been the murder weapon. Officers could do nothing to save Matthew Magis, his pregnant wife, April Olis Magis, and the couple's infant daughter, Lila. Police say they had been dead for almost 24 hours before officers arrived at this home on 22nd Street in Superior. Here they found a murder scene and a string of disturbing details. All three had been shot with a handgun, but police won't say exactly how. Police say the family's three dogs had been shot and killed too. The investigation continues, and police are still trying to find answers. Kevin, the most disturbing detail here, family members say that April Magis was eight months pregnant, just about to deliver her second child. Now, Chief Floyd Peters called this the most difficult and tragic case he's dealt with on his 31 years in the Superior Police Force. Julie Lassa lies. Government bailouts. Massive deficit spending. Jo More Wisconsin jobs are being shipped overseas every day. We see it, but Sean Duffy doesn't. Attack ads, mud slinging, record smearing. Whatever you call it, it's here in northwestern Wisconsin. I'm Julie Lassa, and I approve this message. What you might not know is that many of these attack ads aren't paid for by the candidates. In fact, over $3 million have been shelled out on negative ads by outside groups. Well, the worst was by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce where, you know, they listed my uh, home telephone number for people to call. You know, there's negative mailers that come out on me uh, all the time. And uh, what's sad is my little kids go to school and uh, kids come in with these negative flyers about their dad. According to OpenSecrets.org, shadowy political groups designed specifically to generate votes have shelled out a record amount in Wisconsin's District 7 race. Political experts say it's hard to pin down where that cash is coming from. Mysterious groups unidentified except according to some label, arbitrary label or other, have been putting in uh, remarkable sums of money. It's also uh, been suggested and acknowledged to a degree by the Chamber of Commerce that some of it has come from foreign sources. Just last week, those groups spent over $300,000 on TV ads attacking Julie Lassa and over $250,000 on ads which go after Sean Duffy. I, I do think we need reform when you see how much money is dumped into these races. We need to have disclosure. Voters need to know who's trying to influence their vote during a, a campaign uh, and for what reason. But before they head to the polls, experts say voters should question the credibility of these ads because they don't always know who's paying for them. In Superior, Matt Standle, the Northlands News Center. For about 50 Minnesota veterans, it doesn't get much better than this. I'm just grateful and I'm, I'm thankful. That uh, I've, first time I ever been on a boat and first time I ever been to Lake Superior, 
you know, the lucky one to be the caught the big fish. The 18th Veterans Fishing Day at Knife River was a huge success. The free event brought veterans from Minneapolis and Silver Bay together for a beautiful day of fishing on Lake Superior. They're just out here to relax, enjoy themselves, and when they get that fish on that line, it's worth a million dollars. Captain Dick Slotness volunteered his time and so did about 14 other local guides. Altogether, they helped vets land 82 lake trout, coho salmon, and rainbows. That's over 100 pounds of fresh fish, and Don Wallen handles it all with his electric fillet knife. But I have filleted thousands and thousands of fish, so. But this sure makes it a lot easier. And then as they bring the fish in, the trout, then they cut them up and we cook them. Veterans wait for this every year. Oh, I've been out here 17 times now. Vets from World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam, and those who served in Iraq and Afghanistan all came together. Nice rainbows. About a pound, pound and a half. I think one of them probably weighed about two pounds. And in the end, organizers say the free event was well worth it for one reason. To help the vets out there and get out on the lake. I mean, they gave so much for our freedom. It's, it's great to see people pitch in and to help them. From the Knife River, I'm Matt Standall for the Northlands News Center. Another grandma's marathon has run its course and this year the conditions were ideal. A slight breeze, 65 degrees and a little rain cooled runners down. But it didn't put a stop to some hot competition. Average Joe's elite runners, wheelchair racers and athletes from Kansas City! Yeah, I'm from Georgia. From Italy. Kenya. Uh, I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. All took part in the journey from two harbors to Canal Park. And yes, even some real-life grandmas made it too. It was hard going, there was a headwind, but for me, it was the first grandma's marathon as a new grandma. Known as a runner's race, the hospitality of grandmas brings some folks back every year. But I've run a lot of marathons at different places, Boston, Las Vegas, Minneapolis. This is the best one because of the volunteers, believe me. And there's a reason they call them volunteers. Running from two harbors to Duluth doesn't compute in my brain. <laughs> so no, I just support it. But for many athletes, the 26.2 miles makes perfect sense. I love the atmosphere, I love the people, the energy. I, I like getting into that zone. I like the race aspect, I like racing other people. And for those who need extra motivation, this guy has plenty. These runners all need support. They don't have support, especially on this hill. They don't make it. So this is where, this is the crucial point. Like this guy right here. Okay, Pink, up the hill. There you go, you're gonna make it. Push it hard, push it hard. Grandma's Marathon, a tradition here in the Northland and a reputation well-deserved. From the finish line, I'm Matt Standle for the Northlands News Center.